good morning everyone i apologize for the construction noises in my background there's some construction happening in my house so welcome to your first dsc session we will be covering the basic concepts of arrays and vectors and then we will attempt four questions we will be recording this whole session so please do not get worried if you lose your connection in between so first of all uh, i'll just present now one minute Is my screen visible? Oh yes, it's it's visible. Okay, so I'll be starting with today's session. First of all, I'd like to talk about arrays. I'm pretty sure that by now most of you know what an array is and how it is declared and defined. But still, I will give you a brief recap of what arrays are in case anyone is having any issues. So let's start with the session now. Uh, what is an array? An array is simply a collection of similar type of elements stored at sequential memory locations. So what does sequential memory location means? It means that suppose we have this array of 40, 55, 63, 17, which means that it is an integer array. And as we know, the size of an integer uh, is four bytes. So uh, if the starting address is 100, then we know that since it is sequential memory locations, we know that the next array element will be present at 104. Similarly, the other element will be present at 108 and so on. We won't have the situation where the first element is at 100 and the other elements are at, uh, the second element is at 110, the third is at 120. We won't have that situation because arrays have elements at sequential memory locations. One second, I think I have to let someone in the meeting. I'll just let everyone know that they have to join fast. Just one second. Okay, I'll present again. Yeah, so they are present at sequential memory locations. I hope everyone has understood this point. Like if the first address is suppose 100, usually addresses are not in the form of 100, 104, etc. They are in the form of very long numbers. But for example sake, we are saying that first is at 100. Then since it is an integer, next will be at 104. And elements in an array can be accessed randomly using indices of the array. The indices start from 0 and they go on till the size of array minus 1. So this array, since the length of the array is 9, the indices will go on till 8, which is 9 minus 1. So this is the basic definition of an array. I'm sure no one has any doubts about this. Now we have one-dimensional arrays. Conceptually, we can think of 1D arrays as a row of elements which are stored one after the another one after the another, like in sequential memory locations, as we talked before. The declaration of the array, the declaration of a 1D array is type, which can be int, char, float, double, anything, the array name and the array size. So the array name here in this example is balance. Since we can see that the numbers are uh, floating point or double representation, so we just write double and balance which is the name of the array and size of array is five as we have five elements and the indices are going from zero till four if we want to access 3.4 for example then we just write balance of two two is the index at which 3.4 is present this is how we access elements in a 1d array now we go to two dimensional arrays Two dimensional arrays can be thought of as a list of one dimensional arrays. Okay, so there's nothing very, very difficult about two dimensional arrays. They're simply like a list of 1D arrays. If you have understood 1D arrays, then you can do 2D arrays very easily. Again, we define them as type. Type is int, char, float, double, anything. Then the array name row and column. Row is the number of rows present in the 2D array and column is the number of columns present. Rows are horizontal as given here. Columns are vertical. 
So in this example, we have three rows and four columns. And the array name is ARR. We usually put the array name as ARR because it is very easy. So this array is called end ARR three, four. So three is the row number, four is the column number. So that is all I have about that is all I have to say about arrays because arrays are pretty basic and this is all you need to know conceptually about arrays and you need to know how to use them. Now we go on to vectors. Vectors are very very important. Yeah, one sec. Uh, do I explain it again or you just need to read the slide? Did we mean for example me any declaration double balance five PG Okay. So uh, first of all the array name is balance. We can put the array name as anything. It can be ARR, it can be my name, your name, but usually we put the array name as something which is related to the contents of the array. So suppose we have stored a collection of data representing some kind of a balance. So we name the array as balance and the data is 1000.0, 2.0, 3.4. So as you know, when we have a point involved, it is not an integer anymore. If, if the number is simply 2 or 3, then that is called int. But if it, if it has points involved in that, then we do not use int. Then we can use double here. 5, because there are 5 elements. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the indices are from 0. They go on till 4. 4 because uh, as we saw earlier, the indices go from 0 till size minus 1 of the array. Since the size is 5, the, index, the last index will be 4. So if you want to access the last element, you will write balance of 4 and that will give you 50.0. Okay? Didi, just say, you have written double balance 5. So, I balance 5 is not here. What do you mean? Haan, wo main, nahin, nahin, see, no, no, no. Isme I, have, I have just simply declared the array here. I'm not accessing any element. I have just okay. declared the array. In declaration, may I write the size. Right? The size of the array is 5. 4 simply means the last index. 5 is the size of the array. Because there are 5 elements. If I, if I had written 4 here, then that would mean that I have 4 elements in the array and the last index is 3. So whatever size you write in here, the last index will be size minus 1. Okay, okay. okay. So I was talking about vectors. I have seen before that a lot of people have problems with vectors because it seems like a very new thing. But vectors are very, very important for you. First of all, they're important because uh, when you go to lead code, all of the questions are given in the form of vectors and you really cannot do them in arrays. You cannot change the function and do it in arrays because that is just how the function is defined. So you, know, so you need to know how a vector works. Secondly, vectors are very important because they... Uh, they help us overcome the limitations of arrays. Like you know that in arrays we have to define a size. We cannot just simply define an array and then increase the size later on. We cannot do that, that is not allowed. But what is important about vectors is that the size can, uh, uh, the size is not predefined. We can increase the size later on depending on our need. The other reason why vectors are very important is because they are very easy to work with because they simply have some predefined functions that we can use. The easy part about predefined functions is that we do not have to write the same code again and again and we can just write the function alongside the vector which I'll explain in a bit and you can just use that function as it is. You do, you do not need to write anything else. So this is why vectors are really important and I encourage all of you to get started, get started with vectors. It will seem difficult at first, but you will get used to it soon. So vectors are dynamic arrays. Dynamic means that the, like, they are not static. They change, which means that their size changes depending on the amount of, depending on the number of elements that we are adding. They do not have a predefined size. 
and the elements are stored in sequential memory locations again they are similar to arrays in this fact that the elements are stored in sequential memory locations also they are similar in the fact that you can have only one type of variables in a vector uh, i'll show you the syntax the syntax is vector this the keyword you have to write here vector all the time you have to write it in every case then you have to write the type of vector the type can be int char float even you can also have a pointer type here uh for questions on trees and stuff uh, those questions have a pointer type here or you can have any other type and then the vector name for example you have vector int numbers this means that we have a numbers we have a vector called numbers which has elements of the type int this is what this line means this is how you declare a vector so we will start with some of the basic functions of vectors i will not cover each and every function in vectors you can read the rest of them on geeks so geeks but i will cover the most important ones so first of all we start with the begin function begin function is really important and it is very basic because uh, what it does is that it returns an iterator to the first element of the vector container for example if we have uh, the vector as 1 2 3 4 5 right so the begin function will return an iterator to the first element first element was 1 so it will return an iterator to the first element what is an iterator you may ask so an iterator is an object that functions as a pointer and allows you to access the data elements so as you all know a pointer points to a memory location right it points to where a variable is so that is exactly how an iterator works an iterator also points to a memory location for example if we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 so if we use the begin function the begin function will return an iterator it will not return an int value or char value it will return an iterator you will understand this point later when i do the questions what an what exactly an iterator means but for now you need to know that it will return an iterator to the first element of the vector this is how you define the begin function you just have to write the vector name the vector name can be anything like in this example we have the vector name as numbers so if i want to get the first element if i want to get the iterator to the first element so i will write numbers dot begin also no parameters are passed in this function because you don't you do not need any parameters you you just have to return the first uh, you just have to return the pointer to the first element and for that no parameters are required so this space like uh, parameters you can understand by the arguments that you pass in the function which are then used later in the function but you do not pass any parameters here you simply do vector name dot begin and this will return an iterator similarly you have a function called end it is the same as begin same concept only difference is that it returns the last element iterator to the last element that is the function of begin uh, sorry the function of end begin will return the iterator to the first element end will return the iterator to the last element so now we have empty as the name suggests it will simply tell us if the fun if the vector is empty or not if it has elements or not this function will return a true or false value based on whether the vector is empty or not uh, we define it again as vector name dot empty vector name like we did numbers so we can just write numbers dot empty again no arguments are required here no parameters so for for example if you want to visualize this you have a vector called one uh, my vector which has elements 1 2 3 4 and 5 as you can see this vector is not empty right it has a few elements so if we call the empty function to this vector it should return false because the vector is not empty so it returns false but in case we have an empty vector in case the vector has no element at all then the empty function will return true because yes this vector is empty so that is what the empty function does it is useful in a lot of 
uh, questions and vectors as the base case you will see how it is used when you solve the questions on your own so after this we have the size function <clears throat> the size function it returns an int value of the number of elements in the vector like if you have five elements then the size function will return five if you have two elements it will return two if you have no elements it will return zero like in this example the size is 1 2 3 4 5 we have five elements so the vector will return so the function will return five and this is how you declare it again a vector name dot size again no arguments are required here you just simply have to call this function this function is very very useful because in case of loops like in case of for loops when you do in vectors so for loops may like what you do is ki the initial starting position can be 0 1 whatever according to the question but you signify the end like the upper bound of the for loop you signify that by vector name dot size i will also show this to you in the later example because you might not be able to visualize it right now but that is how size function works now we have pushback pushback is a very very important function in vectors and what it does is that as the name suggests it simply pushes a value to the back to the back means that the value whatever we pass in this function that value will get added to the end of the vector it will never ever get added to any other position it will always get added to the end and when it gets added the vector is uh, the vector becomes the one with the extra element and the size of the vector gets increased by 1 and uh, this is how you declare the push function vector name dot push back and here for the first time you will pass a value and the important thing to note here is that if the vector if the vector you have defined it as int like this vector you can see that it is int right 1 2 3 4 5 these are int numbers so if the vector is of int type the value that you are pushing to the vector should also be int it cannot be bool char float anything else it cannot be that if you push any other value then that will give you an error so you have to keep that in mind while doing questions about uh, questions which involve pushback and uh, this is an example on how to use pushback you have this vector 1 2 3 4 5 you have to add 6 to the end of the vector you have to add 6 here so what you do is you just write my vector dot push back and you write 6 so 6 will get added to the end the size of the vector will now become 6 because now there are 6 elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> so the size of the vector is now 6 earlier it was 5 so that is how push back works similarly you have another function of pop back you can read about that on geeks for geeks it works in almost the same way as pushback now we have the insert function like suppose we don't want to insert the element at the end we want to insert the element at some other position according to our choice so in that case we use the insert function so you have to listen carefully to this point what the insert function does is that inserts new elements before the element at the specified position so what this means is that if i specify the position as 2 if i want to uh, uh, add any element i know there are few people yes. uh, in the waiting room unko let in kar dete one second i could not actually see the waiting room there's just um, one person you know also message on the group yeah uh, her uh, thing is not here i i just saw one person in the waiting room okay just one sec yeah where was i uh, one minute yeah so the insert function inserts new elements before the element at the specified position 
so if we want to insert an element at the second position in the vector then that element will be inserted before the second position i'll illustrate it. i'll illustrate that point through an example later so what happens is first of all the size of the container increases by the number of elements added and the iterator that you have uh, the iterator uh, what this function does is that it will return an iterator to the new element like suppose you have inserted element uh, 3 in the vector for example so what this function returns is that it returns an iterator to the new element i'll just show you an example that will make it more clear first i'll discuss the syntax so the syntax is vector name dot insert position and value position is not an integer this is very important the position will not be an integer you cannot just simply write 5 or 2 or 3 that would be incorrect the position has to be an iterator pointing to a position where we need to insert you might be getting confused i'll just show you in a minute just one second position needs to be an iterator the value has to be of the type of the vector like if the vector is int value also has to be int i'll show you through an example we have a vector called vec and we have elements as 10 20 30 40 so now we want to insert 3 at the starting okay so what we do is uh, we do vector dot begin as i told you before vector dot begin returns an iterator right so since it returns an iterator in this we need an iterator here right so that becomes that solves our issue of adding an iterator here so what we do is we write vector dot begin if we want to insert at the front so as you know vector dot begin points to the first element so vector dot begin will point to 10 but as we saw in the definition insert function inserts new elements before the element at the specified position so the specified position is vector or begin the specified position is uh, the position at, at which 10 is placed right so insert function will insert the new element before vector dot begin one minute ha huh. so it will insert the uh, value before 10 that is it will insert it here so the value that i want to insert is 3 so 3 will get added here काफी लोग हैं So yeah, please refrain from interrupting again and again. Like now, people cannot join because the floor really breaks if I'm teaching and I get interrupted. So yeah, I'll continue. Huh. So as I was saying, the insert function returns an iterator, right? So what we do is that it returns iterator, and we we have passed an iterator here. Vector or begin points to the first element. We are inserting three before the first element, which means that we are inserting it at this position. So if, if we are inserting at this position, so three gets inserted at the front. The new vector becomes three, then ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and now we want to insert two at the front. So we have two choices. We can write vector or begin again. or we can just pass this iterator here because now the iterator points to 3 right iterator is pointing to 3 as we saw that the it returns an iterator to the new element new element was 3 3 got inserted at the beginning so now this iterator is pointing to 3 so we can simply pass it here or if you want to make it simple if you don't want to have all this headache of passing an iterator you can just write vector dot begin if you want to insert at the front if you want to insert at any other position like if you want to insert at the ith position if i is equal to 2 if you want to insert at the second position you cannot simply write i here you cannot just write i you have to write vector dot begin plus i because as i said before this position has to be an iterator so vector dot begin an iterator 
plus i so from the first element till i steps at that position then 7 will get inserted this is how the insert function works you will get to have a deeper understanding of all these functions when you apply them yourself maybe just listening to them might not clear everything but once you start practicing i'm sure that you will understand uh we have arrays function arrays function is useful in a lot of questions that you will do as it is obvious from the name of the function this function simply removes the elements from the container from a specified position or a range so what this means is that either we can remove one element from a specified position that we want or we can remove elements between a range so if we remove elements between a range then a lot of elements will get deleted right so the syntax of arrays function is again vector name dot arrays and position here you will also again pass an iterator so uh, the other way to define the arrays function if you if you want to delete elements within a range is what you do is start position and end position right so if you have a vector as 1 2 3 4 5 and iterator as 2 so what you do is you pass the iterator pointing to the second element and then second element is this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 3 is at the second position so 3 will simply get erased from here vectors also have the same way of uh, defining indices as an in array the first index is from 0 so this is how you count indexes 0 1 2 3 4 So two, so three is at the second position. So you simply remove three from here. In this case, the start position is three, end position is six. You put those values in here. My vector dot arrays. You put those values in here, and all the elements between that range get deleted. Okay. So this is how the arrays function works. you can learn more about i have given very short definitions of these functions right now because it is not possible to cover every single thing about these functions so if you have any issues you can read about it on geeks for geeks that is where i learned all of my concepts and a lot of concepts will also get cleared out when you start practicing questions so i would highly suggest that you should just get down to doing hi, questions hi hi mehul mehul am i audible yeah Uh, yeah, you're audible, but just be a, be a little bit loud because I'm having some trouble. Yeah, uh, what I'm saying is, can you please explain this one again? The, this iterator one, the while we are erasing um, a particular element or elements from a particular range, I needed to understand okay, it again. I couldn't get it at once. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll explain this erase function again. so as the name suggests the arrays function removes the elements from the vector container like if we have the vector container as 1 2 3 4 5 so if we want to uh, the arrays function gives us two choices we can either erase one element from one position or we can erase a number of elements between a given range so what there are two ways to define this function first way is that you write vector name dot arrays and then position so this will simply delete one element from that given position the other way to do this is vector name dot arrays and start position till end position this is where the erasing happens this is where the erasing ends right so all the Hi, elements between know. this range will get deleted i cannot uh Uh, have you stopped sharing it, or is it only me who can speak it? No, I am presenting. Can others see my screen, or is it like an isolated problem? Uh, no, your can screen you is visible. Screen yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I think to other point. Acha. Okay. Um, is it visible now? Yes, yes, it is. okay so uh, yeah i was here like the elements between this given range will get removed and similarly you have another function called clear c 
clear function what it does it that is that it removes all the elements from the vector container like if you want to delete all of the elements you simply write clear okay so that function you can read from geeks for geeks but i'll just explain the erase function again you have a vector of 1 2 3 4 5 you have an iterator too again you have to pass an iterator here my vector dot erase and you pass an iterator so what happens is that i want the element at the second position to get deleted i don't want any other element to get deleted i just want to remove this one okay so if i pass the iterator to the second position then what happens is that only this element will get deleted second position in vectors the way of uh, defining indices is the same as in arrays indices will start from the uh, from zero they will go on till size of the vector minus 1 so the second index is this is zero this is one this is two so this is the second index this element will simply get removed okay so now uh, what happens is that if you want to now remove uh like elements from a range so what you do is you pass the iterator to the starting point of the range and to the end point of that range in this function as i defined here and then all the elements between that given range will get deleted as in this example that you can see okay and this uh, function will not give you any errors except like if you have uh, put in a range which is not valid then it might give you an error but otherwise it won't give you any error and it will simply remove the elements from the vector and then the size of the vector also decreases by the number of elements that you have removed so for example initially my size was 5 now the size becomes 4 and same in this case the size of the element size of the vector gets decreased that is all about vector functions you can read more about them from geeks for geeks or other platforms that is where i learned all of this stuff so uh, this is and uh, solving more questions will definitely help and it will clear your concepts so now i move on to the first question this question is very interesting to me because uh, there are two very good approaches to do this question So first of all I'll let you guys read the question on your own then I'll explain it I'll give you 1 minute to read this question Okay so I hope everyone has read the question now uh, one minute I think there are doubts I just got a message in the chat box uh, yes you also ha you have array list in java actually I do not know a lot about java so you can ask all of your uh, java doubts to nishtha nishtha is another mentor so you can text her personally if you have any java doubts but all I know is that in java you have array list instead of vectors okay okay yeah so i'll continue i hope everyone has read the question but now i will start explaining it you have an array you have a vector called nums okay you have been given this vector and nums has n distinct elements in the range from 0 to n the elements like are given as 0 1 2 3 4 5 whatever whatever till n and the catch here in this question as is, is that one of those elements in that range is missing and you have to find that element also the vector is not sorted beforehand you have to perform any other function that might come to your mind but the vector will be in the unsorted condition and you have to return the number which is missing like if you have a vector from 0 1 2 and then you have like i'll i'll explain the way of this example that will help it more so as you can see the vector here is 0 1 3 there are three elements the size of the vector is 3 
which means that the last element in this vector if you sort it has to be 3 as you saw in this exam as you saw in this question like if you have three distinct uh, numbers then the last element has to be 3 and one number in the middle is missing from it so if you see this closely what is missing here is 2 if you can think about it like if you sort this vector you will get 0 1 and 3 and you find that 2 is missing here so you have to return 2 from this uh, question the explanation is uh, we know that n is 3 size of the vector is 3 3 elements right so there are 3 numbers since uh, if there are 3 numbers then all of the numbers in that range from 0 to 3 should be present in the vector but they are not one element is missing so you have to find that missing element and you have to return it 2 is the missing number in the range since it does not appear in this vector called nums. 2 is missing here. So I'll give you guys one minute to think about an approach and let me know if you have any ideas and then we'll move on to two approaches to this question. And they're really easy if you listen closely. So please let me know if you have any approaches. Okay, so I will uh, let you guys know about the approaches. First of all, I'll implement the approach which is the most uh, basic one, the one that you can see just by looking at the question. So what you first do is that you sort the vector. Okay, because only by sorting can you see which element is missing. Okay, so like suppose if we sort the vector, then we have 0, 1 and 3. Then just by looking at the vector, we can see that 2 is missing. So by that, you should have an idea that you need to first sort the vector. So what happens is that vectors have an inbuilt sort function. The implementation I'll show you in the code. You will understand it then. And you can also read about it. So first of all, you sort the vector using the inbuilt sort function. So now the vector after sorting has become 0, 1, 3, right? I encourage all of you to write this down yourself, like the dry run along with me, so that it is easier for you to understand. So what happens? Yeah. 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 I have this one approach, like after sorting. Yeah. What can we do is uh, we find the differences between two uh, two constituent uh, numbers. Hmm. If the number comes, uh, if the difference comes out to be one, this means the numbers are in continuation. But mm -hmm. uh, if it is one or more than one, this means there is there are some numbers missing between the two numbers, and yeah. hence we can find that. Yeah, that is a good approach. But I feel that in that approach, the time complexity would be a bit higher. That is definitely a good approach, and it will work in this question. You can try that approach yourself on lead code, and I feel that it would work. It's a good approach, and it's great that you thought about it on your own. So. Okay. Yeah, so I'll continue with the approach that I have written. This is the first approach. I'll be telling another one. So yeah, first of all, you sort the vector. After sorting, the vector becomes 0, 1, 3, right? So now, first of all, you have to implement a basic check. There might be a case wherein the last element of the vector is not present. Like if we have three elements here, and we have 0, 1, and 2. Instead of 3, we have 2 here. Then we know that 3 is missing, right? Because if there are 3 elements in the vector, then the last element has to be 3. Okay? So we know that 3 is missing, so we don't need to even do the whole question. The uh, function should return at that point. So we do a basic check in the starting. What we do is, we check if the element at the last position is equal to the size of the vector or not. We do this because the size of the vector is n. So after sorting the last, uh, the element at the last position should also be n as we see in the given question. So we check if the element at the last position 
is equal to the size of the vector or not if it is not equal then we have solved the question and we can simply return that the last element is the missing one and we can either return the last element or we can return the size of the vector because size of the vector is equal to the last element and that is missing so we can simply return the size of the vector i'll show you in the code then it will be a bit more easy to visualize it but in case the last element is not missing and some other random element is missing then what do you do so what you do is that you iterate through the vector starting from the zeroth index to vector dot size as i told you before vector dot size gives you the size of the whole vector the number of elements in the whole vector so in the loop you will write from i is equal to 0 till i is smaller than vector dot size i will show you in the code so that is how you will iterate through the loop so now listen carefully what you do is that at every position you check if the index of that position is equal to the element at that position or not because first of all we have sorted the vector so when we sort it if if the vector is perfect if there is no missing element then by logic you should know that the first element like the zeroth element should have zero present on it the element at first index should have one present on it right so what you do is that you perform a check of the index at a given position and the element present at that index in case those two values do not match then you know that you have a missing element the missing element is equal to the index of that element okay so um i'll tell you in this way you sorted the vector okay so you sorted it it became 0 1 3 if you write the indices of this vector 0 is at the zeroth index 1 is at the first index and now you see that 3 is at the second index this is wrong Two should be at the second index, right? So two should be at the second index, but we find that three is at the second index. Since three is not equal to two, then we know that at that position two should have been present, and so two is the missing number. So if the index is not equal to the element at the given position, then that index is the missing element, and we return the index. And since we return the index, then will the program will terminate but if the loop finishes without returning any value then you just return minus 1 which means that no element is missing from the vector but in this question there is no case to show that uh, the vector might be complete in some cases so uh, you will never get minus 1 value from this question you will always always get some missing elements value so i'll show you the code everything will be easier to visualize when you see the code so what happens is the function is called missing number it is of int type because you have to return a value an integer value and you have this vector called nums so what you do is first of all you sort the vector now sorting a vector is easy because you just have to do the sort function you do not have to implement any sorting algorithm on your own you just have to sort it what you do is you put iterators for the starting position till the end position as i explained before nums dot begin gives you the iterator to the first position and nums dot end gives you the iterator to the last position then this means that the vector gets sorted from the first to the last position that is the vector is now sorted so uh, after this step after this first step that we have done the vector is sorted we have our vector so now we implement this check the check that i told you about in point 2 and 3 we implement this so what you do is that you check if the element at the last position is equal to the size or not as i told you the element at the last position should be equal to the size of the vector if it is not equal then it means then the last element is missing 
so if it is not equal if the last element is not equal to the size then the last element is missing and we simply return nums dot size which is uh, in this case nums dot size is 3 so we just return 3 here in case 3 was missing but here 3 is not missing in this question 3 is not the missing number so this check will not happen because this if condition will see that the last element is equal to nums dot size so it will not return anything from here it will move on to this for loop so what happens in this for loop is as i told you in this uh, fourth point you iterate through the vector starting from 0 to vec dot size so the uh, i is from 0 and i goes to nums dot size and i is smaller than nums dot size because the size of the vector like in even arrays what you do is that i is smaller than size of the array right in normal array questions so here nothing is different you just the way of writing is different you just write nums dot size and you increment i this is a normal for loop and now you check using point 5 and 6 you check if the element at the ith position is equal to the index or not i is the index okay since i is the index you check if the element at the ith index is equal to i or not but after sorting we saw that 3 is at the second position so i is 2 but uh, nums of i is 3 since they are not equal we return the index therefore we return 2 from this function and as we return 2 we find out that 2 is a missing number and here the program will return an index and if there is no missing number the program will return minus 1 but uh, it will always return a missing value because it is stated in the question it is not stated anywhere that in case the vector has no missing value return minus 1 that is not stated here anyway it is not stated so you just return i and you have to assume that the function will end here but just for returning a value at the end you just write minus 1 here but that is the whole function that is how you implement one approach of this question this was the easiest approach so does anyone have any problems here I cannot see the chat box. I'll just look at it right now in case. Uh, yeah, Hina. Uh, yeah, I will be discussing this approach. It's great that you guys have this, but I will be discussing this one minute. So this was a very easy approach. I hope no one has any issues with it. But if in case anyone has you guys can unmute yourself because it is difficult for me to you know go back to the chat box every time so um, you can read this approach you can take a picture of it in case you want to look at it later i'll just give you a second to take a picture and uh, i will also share the ppt later on so don't worry in case you miss something i will share the whole ppt now you have the second approach which heena and purti said so what you do is that in the second approach you find first of all as you all know there is a formula that we have been using since years the formula is that the sum of numbers till n 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 till n is equals to n into n plus 1 divided by 2 here in this question we have n Uh, we have been given n right which is the number of elements that should be present in the array that are present so here we have n is equal to 3 so the sum of this array should be n into n plus 1 by 2 which is 3 into 4 by 2 which is 6 so the sum of the array should be in a perfect case it should be 6 but what sum are we getting from this given array we are getting 3 plus 0 plus 1 we are getting 4 so 4 is not equal to 6 so what we do intuitively is that first of all we find the total sum of the vector that should have been like by calculating uh, 
using this formula n is the size so you can write size into size plus 1 divided by 2 this will give you the sum of all the elements that should have been present in case there was no missing element in the vector so this is the total sum now you uh, what, now what you do is after calculating this total sum you store this value in a variable called total sum or any other variable that you might like and what you do is that you iterate through the given vector like the vector that you has the vector that has a missing number you iterate through the given vector and find the sum of the elements that is you iterate through this 3 plus 0 plus 1 and you get sum as 4 that is the calculated sum so now what you do is you just do total sum minus calculated sum this is I think this is more easy than the previous approach because this is just using the formula. You don't have to sort the vector. Or you, don't, you don't have to do anything in this. You just have to use a formula. So here is the code. Uh, you can uh, directly write nums.size here. But uh, I first stored the value of nums.size in n to make this formula a bit more readable. But it is your choice. You can simply write nums.size. But I did n. So first of all, you, what you do is that you store the value of nums.size in a variable. And you calculate total sum by the formula that I told you earlier. n into n plus 1 divided by 2. This will give you the total sum of the vector that should have been. In case there was no missing number. So the total sum should have been 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is 6. It should have been 6. So in that case, the total sum, T sum, will give you 6. Here you can just write in the dry run that T sum will give you 6. And now you take another variable called sum and initialize it to 0. And this variable will be used to store the sum of the, uh, of the vector that is given to us. So now again, we iterate through the vector using the for loop that we used in the last approach. We simply iterate through it and we calculate the sum by adding each element. So we added each element. The sum is 3 plus 0 plus 1. The sum is 4. And now you just have to return their difference. The difference is 6 minus 4. That is total sum minus sum. And the difference is 2, which is our missing number. So this was the second approach. And... I prefer this approach when I'm solving this question because it does not involve the sorting function or any other uh, thing. You can just write the formula. So this was the second approach. If anyone has any questions at this moment, please you can ask. And this was all from my side. Now Bhavani will continue. But before that, does anyone have any issues with this? Um, Didi? Hmm. एक कोई doubt है like uh, for example हम अगर पहले वाला example ले इसी में तो उसमें हाँ so इसमें इधर लिखा है three zero one hmm. so what if अगर zero नहीं है three hmm. two one है hmm. one so, two three इसमें, okay. yeah so क्या हम missing number इसमें zero को कहेंगे hmm. one minute let me think about this if you have one, two, three. Yeah, so what what happens in this approach is that like if you use this first approach, then yeah. same you, hai na? like mm -hmm. index at this approach, like uh, in this what I said was that index should be equal to the element at the given position. So it's maybe missing number mil jayega tumko. Okay. You will mm -hmm. find the number. And in the even in the second approach i will also tell you about the second approach so what happens is uh, you are returning t sum minus sum okay so total sum in like in your example you have taken 1 2 3 hai na you have taken 1 2 3 so total sum is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 uh, which is like even if you use this formula or even if you use normally but let us use this formula okay so if you use this formula the total sum is equal to six hai na? total sum is six and now you iterate through the vector 
you iterate through one, two, and three. You iterate through them, so the sum is also six, right? Mm -hmm. Sum is six, sir. Total sum is six, sir. So you subtract them, so we will get zero. In the answer, ma'am. But the if, for example, I believe that there is no number missing, then we should get minus one. But if the sum will be the same, that will be equal to total sum. So total sum minus sum will be zero. But our value should be minus one. No, no, it should not be minus one. It should be zero. Okay. 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 Okay.
Um, okay, so you guys can just respond once. Um, anyways, I will just continue. Just so, one second. Uh, one second. Hina asked something. Hina asked, I, I did not see her question earlier. So she has written, when we use inbuilt functions in our code, its time and space complexity also gets added. Yes, their time and space complexity gets added. Whatever the complexity might be, it will get added when we calculate the time complexity of the whole question. So it will get added. You can continue now. Okay. Uh, so in this question, what approach we are going to use is um, that we are going to find the complement of the number. Okay, so we will be, uh, because we have to find two numbers, so we will have two in this, uh, two iterative pointers, first of all, and we have to find the complement, which means that the complement of, for example, two is a four. Push. Bhavani, is everything okay? Like your screen sharing stopped. One minute, just one minute, guys. Uh, she's just facing net issues. Just wait two minutes and she'll continue the lesson. Just wait for two minutes. No, her laptop disconnected. Hi, sorry guys, um, my net is just acting up right now. Um, I will continue again. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Um, okay. So in this question, um, like I hope you guys are calling. Uh, you are presenting your screen. Present your screen. Okay, so uh, in this question, like we are given, uh, I hope you guys have seen the example once. So how exactly will we reach our target? Okay, so we need two elements. So we will require two for loops. I hope that is clear because we have to iterate through the uh, uh, um, through the vector twice. Like we have to find two indices. So we will require two for loops. Now we will have first element already, like one, the first pointer will be pointing to the first element and then we will have to search for the second element so we will start searching after uh, the second pointer will start searching after the first element okay so like our pointer if the first pointer is at i then our second pointer will start from i plus j and then we will go through rest elements to find something that matches up to give a pair that adds up to the target element. Okay, we will be finding the complement here. The comp like for example, I will show you guys. Um, wait. I don't know. Um, is my screen visible? The paint screen is is that visible? No, that screen is not visible. Is it visible now? 
yes it's visible now okay so like in this uh, question we are given 3 2 and 4 so our first pointer initially would be at 3 like i is at 3 and then we will traverse the whole array to find the complement of 3 so our target is 6 and we know that the complement uh, uh, will add up to give us 6 so 6 minus 3 uh, okay this is really bad but uh, so we need to find an element 3 now we will not we will not get another element 3 here and in the question it is specified that we cannot repeat the elements so we cannot our answer cannot be 0 comma 0 it will have to be two unique indices so then our pointer like our j would start from i plus 1 from here our j would start and then it will go to 4 and then we will come out of the first loop because we could not find the complement for 3 so then our i like this will cut and then our i would be pointing to 2 and we will search for an element that will add up to give us 2 okay so 6 uh, will add up to give us 6 so 6 minus 2 is equal to 4 so we have to search for an element 4 now our j would start from i plus 1 because we need unique elements so here we will see that we already have 4 so what we are going to return is we will return 1 comma 2 okay because the index is like the index of 3 is 0 2 is 1 and 4 is 2 so we have to finally return the index of each element do you guys have any doubt in the approach someone has given another approach so maybe you can read that mm -hmm. you can We need to do two loops. I is not equal to zero. I plus one. Uh, yeah, that is exactly what we are doing. But I am just finding the complement first. Like your approach is completely fine. But I am just finding the complement first, and then I'm. Uh, and then I will check if the target, if if my uh, like in the complement that I'm finding, if I find another element that will add up to give me the target. is i'm going to return my new array okay like i will first of all like uh in this i will create another answer vector and then i will traverse both uh, i will traverse my vector with two pointers so the first pointer will start from 0 and the second will start from i plus 1 as i just told you that because we we want unique elements so our second pointer will be starting from i plus 1 and then if we find a j which is equal to the target minus i we will add i and j to the answer vector okay and then uh, as nehal had just taught you guys the pushback function we will be using that so this is the code here wait um in this code like we first initially create an answer vector and then we traverse from i is equal to 0 to nums dot size and then in the second loop we are starting from i plus 1 till nums dot size and then if we find like here this target minus nums dot i is equal to the complement okay like i can also uh, initialize complement here like complement is equal to target minus nums dot nums i and then nums dot j should be equal to the complement okay um i can show you guys this question okay. 
like over here, I will just make a vector answer picture. I will create a for loop and initially I will initialize it with zero. Wait, I think we are running short of time, so I will just copy this solution once and show you guys. Um, I hope you guys can see this. This is what I was talking about. Like I will create a complement which will be equal to target minus the nums i, and then my nums j would be equal to the complement. And with answer dot push back, I will push the index of i, and I will also push the index of j once I find i and j. Okay, that will add up to be the target element. I think that would be it for this question. And the time complexity, since we have two for loops, so the worst time complexity would be like this will traverse n number of times. This uh, uh, this for loop will traverse n number of times, and this for loop will traverse n number of times. So the time complexity would be n squared. If you guys have any doubt in this question, you guys can ask me. I will check the chat once. Okay, there's nothing else. Okay, should I go on with the second question? If this one is clear. You guys can respond if you have any doubts. Wait for two minutes, please. Okay, you have a doubt, Bhanu Priya. Um, okay, wait, I will show you this. Cool. Um, you guys can also click pictures of whatever we are showing right now, or you can wait for the PPT and upload it in a few hours after the session. I will wait for two minutes, then Bhanu Priya can go through this code once. Um, I will explain the code again. So in this, we have initially I've created another vector answer. And then I have traversed the vector with two pointers. The first pointer starts from zero. And the second pointer starts from i plus one. Okay, like here I've explained this. The first will start from zero and the second will start from i plus one. Because we don't want the same element, the same index to, uh, we don't want to return the same index. Like if we traverse the same array, uh, if we traverse j from zero as well, so the answer will be returned zero comma zero because we will find another three over here, but we don't want that. We want unique elements. So that is why we will traverse, we will start traversing j. I, 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 uh, the pointer j will start from i plus one and it will go on till nums dot size till the last element. And if we find a j which is equal to target, which was six in this case, minus the element that we have at nums i, then we will push back, like we will insert the element, the, um, the index i to answer. And then we will also push back the uh, index j to our answer. So our answer will return one comma zero. Like here, you guys can see a uh, uh, one comma two. Can I start with the second question? If this is fine with you, 
Um, Bhanupya, can I start with the second question? Um, okay. Okay. Time complexity, I hope that is clear. Uh, we will be starting with the second question, which is rotate an array. I will give you guys 10 seconds to just go through the question once and also read the example once yourself. Um, okay, so now we will start with this question. Um, so do you guys have any approaches in your mind? We will be doing it by two approaches. One brute force approach and the other approach, which is an interesting approach. So uh, do you guys have any idea how we're going to start this question? And please unmute yourself if you guys have any approach in your mind, because I cannot see the chat box. Okay, nobody has any idea here. I'm sure you guys must have done this question. Okay, okay. Uh, what we can do here is, I mean, I don't know how to convert into a array, but since we have k equals to k, so we can convert the array into subarrays which have uh, two consecutive elements of the parent array, and then uh, we can, uh, know what we can do is switch the positions uh, of the. Uh, elements in the sub arrays and then place them back into the parent array. Mm, yes. Uh, uh, you're kind of correct, you're partially correct. So in this question, like, we will not create a sub array of two elements specifically. Uh, we will be creating a sub array. Uh, this approach I will be telling you guys, this will be the second approach. So um, in this, like you said, that we will be creating a sub array of two elements. That part is not correct. We will be creating an a sub array of k elements and k n minus k elements. Okay, so um, this will be clear once I discuss it. So the first approach would be the brute force of brute force approach. So in this approach, we will rotate the element by one step in each uh, rotate by one in each step, and then we will stop after k steps. Okay, but this approach it is quite lengthy, and in lead code also, if you guys solve by this approach, you will get an, a time limit uh, exceeded error because for larger inputs, this, this approach takes a lot of time. Okay, but still I will show you guys um, the code right now. Um, and this approach, it does work, work for all the smaller inputs, but for a larger input, it will not work. Okay, it will, ex the time limit would be exceeded. So like in this- I'm um, having हम्म Wait, I will show it to you here. Um, जैसे इसके अंदर जो हमें elements मिले हुए हैं, वो है minus hundred. Minus um, I'm sorry for the lighting, but I hope it's clear. And three, okay. And जो हमें k मिला है, k is equal to two, okay. So इसमें सबसे पहले जो हमारा सबसे first step होगा, मतलब जब ये जो work कर रहा होगा, वो होगा कि हमारा जो three है, वो सबसे आगे जाएगा, okay. Like from here, three will move on to the first, okay. So three, and then बाकी सारे हमारे एक एक स्टेप पीछे जाएंगे माइनस हंड्रेड नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इज माइनस वन एंड नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इज नाइनटी नाइन ठीक है तो उसके बाद अब हमारा जो सेकंड स्टेप होगा उसमें होगा कि हमारा नाइनटी नाइन जो है वो अब सबसे आगे जाएगा ठीक है सो अब यहाँ पे आ जाएगा नाइनटी नाइन फिर आएगा थ्री फिर आएगा माइनस हंड्रेड फिर 
एंड फिर आएगा माइनस वन ओके इज दिस क्लियर नाउ ओके सो वापस आते हैं इस पे um, तो इस क्वेश्चन में सबसे पहले uh, हम लोग ये जो फर्स्ट स्टेप हम क्यों कर रहे हैं अब इसके अंदर आई विल टेक एन इजियर एग्जाम्पल ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इज वन टू एंड टू एंड थ्री एंड आर के इज इक्वल टू फोर ओके अब अगर k इज ग्रेटर देन द साइज ऑफ द आर ए तो हमारे पास जो आइट्रेशन आई विल जस्ट राइट डाउन द स्टेप्स राइट नाउ फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन में थ्री वन एंड टू हो जाएगा सेकेंड के अंदर टू थ्री वन हो जाएगा थर्ड के अंदर वन टू थ्री हो जाएगा एंड फोर्थ स्टेप के अंदर थ्री वन एंड टू हो जाएगा सो आ फोर्थ स्टेप इज इक्वल टू आ फर्स्ट स्टेप ओके ये दोनों सिमिलर रिजल्ट देंगे तो इसमें अगर हम फोर्थ को डिवाइड करें बाई द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स तो हमारे पास जो इसका मॉड्यूलस आएगा दैट वुड बी वन मॉड्यूलस इज द रिमेंडर जो रिमेंडर आएगा दैट वुड बी वन एंड दैट इज द नंबर ऑफ स्टेप्स दैट वी हैव टू परफॉर्म हियर टू द ओके तो ये वाला स्टेप अगर किसी को नहीं क्लियर था तो मैंने यहाँ लिख दिया इफ के इज ग्रेटर देन द साइज देन वी हैव टू वी हैव टू फाइंड अ केस सच दैट वी विल परफॉर्म लीस्ट नंबर ऑफ आइट्रेशन एंड वी विल स्टिल गेट द रिजल्ट ओके एंड देन इसके अंदर नेक्स्ट वॉट वी आर डूइंग इज वी विल क्रिएट टेंथ एंड प्रीवियस वी विल क्रिएट टू वेरिएबल्स एंड इन दिस द फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन वी विल गो फ्रॉम जीरो टिल के because we have to perform steps okay hame kitne steps lene hai k number of steps lene hai and we are already initializing it by zero so that is why i is less than k okay to hamara first step zero step ke liye pura perform hoga then hamara first step ke liye pura perform hoga and jab k hoga to we will come out of the loop okay k because k is equal to 2 here so first step zero ke liye second step one ke liye and we will be performing ye pura iterations for टिल के टिल आई इज लेस देन टू सो उसके अंदर हमारे जो प्रीवियस एलिमेंट है वो हम नम्स का जो लास्ट एलिमेंट है हम उसको बना लेते हैं आई विल शो यू गाइज योर इसके अंदर हमने जो हमारा प्रीवियस एलिमेंट हमने बनाया वो हमने बना दिया थ्री ओके सो आ प्रीवियस एलिमेंट इज इक्वल टू थ्री ओके टेम्प इज इक्वल टू द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट सो जे इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दैट इज वाई टेम बिकम्स वन एंड देन वी कन्वर्ट आर नम्स जे टू द प्रीवियस एलिमेंट नाउ प्रीवियस एलिमेंट एज वी नो वॉज थ्री हियर सो दिस दिस फर्स्ट एलिमेंट बिकम्स थ्री ओके सो दिस Okay, so our first element here. Now this becomes three, two, and three. Okay, and then our next element. Now, as you can see in this code, uh, now nums j becomes previous, and the previous becomes ten. So this was our previous element, and that becomes ten.
kalau bu susah ya di kan di guys thank you guys from all only um okay so in this approach like um i'm not able to write properly in that so i'm sorry for that um in this like we will make a temp which will be our first element and then the first element would become the previous element that we had already inserted here so like the previous element would be three here so our first element becomes three and the previous element that we had initially would become ten okay so uh, in this like uh, like have you guys done the swapping question before this is exactly what we are doing it's just that we have different elements that we are swapping here i don't know how to explain it to you guys here because i'm not able to write properly uh hello bhavani yeah uh the thing is ki hum yahan pe swap to kar rahe hain lekin hamare paas ek aur cheez hai jo hame karni hai hame sare numbers ko ek ek position aage shift bhi karna hota hai matlab agar main fourth ko first pe leke aa rahi hu to mujhe first second third ko ek ek aage shift bhi karna hoga to us wale बिगर अप्रोच लेते हैं टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन ओके सो अब इसके अंदर जो हमारा प्रीवियस है प्रीवियस एलिमेंट इन इनिशली इज सेवन ओके तो उसके बाद जो हमारा फर्स्ट जो हमारा टेम्प है टेम्प इनिशियली इज इक्वल टू वन ठीक है अब उसके बाद जो हमने uh, हमारा जो नेक्स्ट अप्रोच है वो है कि हमने अपने प्रीवियस एलिमेंट को टेम्प में कन्वर्ट कर दिया तो हमारा जो हमारा टेम्प है वो प्रीवियस एलिमेंट बन गया तो इसलिए सेवन कट होके यहाँ पे वन आ जाएगा एंड जो हमारा टेम्प है वो हमारा नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट पे शिफ्ट हो जाएगा सो दिस विल कम एट टू एंड देन सिमिलरली नेक्स्ट हमारा जो प्रीवियस एलिमेंट होगा वो फिर से टेम्प बनेगा तो ये यहाँ पे अब ये टू बन जाएगा एंड ये जो हमारा टेम्प है दिस बिकम्स थ्री and then similarly this 2 will become 3 and this 3 will become 4 okay so agar hum yahan pe dekhe ye sare hamare ek ek karke shift ho rahe hain this is basically the temp 1 pe aaya then 1 2 pe gaya then 2 3 pe gaya then 3 4 pe gaya 4 hamara 5 pe gaya 5 hamara 6 pe gaya and 6 hamara 7 pe gaya हमारा सॉरी यहाँ पे ये फाइव है फाइव हमारा सिक्स पे गया सिक्स जो है वो सेवन पे गया एंड जो सेवन है वो इनिशियलाइज जो वन से हुआ था वो उस पे गया सॉरी यहाँ पे नहीं वो जो यहाँ पे वन आ गया तो हमारा ये जो फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन हमारी यहाँ से कन्वर्ट हो गई अब जो हमारा नेक्स्ट हमारा जब जो हम लूप चलाएंगे तो हमारा जो प्रीवियस स्टार्ट होगा वो होगा सिक्स से तो हमारा प्रीवियस वुड बिकम सिक्स एंड देन द प्रीवियस and then the temp would be 7 here and then uske baad hamara ab jo previous hai that would become 7 and our temp would become 1 and then similarly ye jo hamara ab 6 hai jaise hamara 7 sabse aage gaya tha and baaki sare piche ho gaye the waisi ab hamara 6 sabse aage jayega fir 7 aayega yahan pe fir 1 fir 2 3 and so on yahan pe ye dekh rahe hain nums mein sabse pehle hamara jo first element hai wo gaya then first element pe hamara jo previous element jo humne yahan pe initialize kiya tha wo aaya fir previous pe jo humne temp pe store kiya tha wo aaya and ye wali hamari cycle chali jab tak hamara ek first iteration complete nahi hoga hamari ye wali cycle jo second for loop hai wo chala एंड उसके बाद जो हमारी एक के फॉर लूप कंप्लीट हो गई देन हमने जो प्रीवियस एलिमेंट है वो हमने फिर से ट्रेवर्स किया फिर से प्रीवियस एलिमेंट हमारा लास्ट एलिमेंट बना एंड देन हमने फिर से ही फॉर लूप ट्रेवर्स कर ली
अभी आया समझ This might be a bit difficult to understand at first because the scenes, all of the scenes, a bit complex. But what would really help is if you could write down this code or take a screenshot of this code and then do the dry run yourself. That usually helps me a lot when I'm solving questions and I don't understand the code. So maybe you could try that again, like do the dry run. And if you face any problems, we are here with you. You can text all of us any time if you have doubts. Should I go on with the second approach of this question, which is a easier approach? Okay, um, I hope this one was clear. I will move on to the next approach here. So, in this approach, we will reverse the complete array first. Like this is a very interesting approach. We will reverse the complete array first. and then we will reverse the first k elements and the last k elements like uh, bhanupriya had told us like initially so only the change in her approach was that we will be making sub arrays of k and n minus k elements okay so in this question like wait i will show you guys here like in this question if i have 1 2 3 and 4 and my k remains k is equal to 2 only so in this question first i will reverse the complete array okay so this becomes 4 3 2 and 1 and then i will reverse the first k elements and then i will reverse the first n minus now n here is 4 so n minus k would be equal to 2 only would be equal to 2 only so then i will reverse these two elements okay so now my answer array becomes 3 4 1 and 2 and this is exactly what my answer would have been if because initially 4 would have gone at the first so it would have become 4 1 2 3 and then in the second one second part 3 4 1 2 okay so how are exactly we going to do this question so uh like you guys can ignore the first part right now in this question the simple part like k uh, k mod n i have already told you guys what it was in the previous approach so we are reversing the array and we are reversing the starting pointer is from 0 till n minus 1 this in at in this call we are reversing the complete array and then from 0 till k minus 1 we are reversing the array elements from 0 till k uh, from uh, the first element till k elements and in the third call we are reversing from k elements till last element okay these are the three calls um, i will repeat once again so in this uh, just to shorten the code or to make it a little easier i have initialized n with nums dot size and then k is equal to k mod n which i have told you guys in the previous approach and then we are calling reverse array and i am uh, and i am reversing the initially i'm reversing the complete array from 0 till the last element and then in the second call i'm reversing the the sub array from 0 till k elements and in the third one i'm reversing from k plus 1th element till n minus 1 elements okay and since uh, we the indexing starts from 0 that is why this is 0 uh, for the first element 0 for another first element and k for the k plus 1th element okay so here when we call the reverse array function which is actually the swapping function in this like the low is the first index and the high is the last index of the sub array that we have to reverse till the time low is less than high we swap the two elements i am directly calling the function swap you can also uh, initial uh, have a variable temp and then store the the value of low in temp and then convert high to lo uh, low and then uh, temp to high but here i am directly calling the swap function 
so um, after swapping them then uh, since low is at the first is, is the starting element we move up pointer low plus plus and then the high is the last element we move the pointer high minus minus so in this whole the first uh, function we are just reversing the sub arrays and in this we are calling the reverse function uh, do you guys have any doubt in this approach um can you explain this uh, reverse array function again okay uh, so in this question um initially i am taking low and high low is the starting pointer and high is the last uh, low is the starting index and high is the last index okay now till the time i have two pointers now till the time the pointer low is less than high okay low is the starting index that is less than the ending index we swap the numbers the elements at low and high um wait i will show you is this swapping uh, another function which is printed it is, it is, it is another inbuilt function it is another inbuilt function like for example i have this number uh, so initially my low is here and my high is here okay if i'm giving uh, the function to reverse the complete array now till the time my low is less than my high i will swap the function so this becomes 4 2 3 and 1 okay after that low plus plus and high minus minus so now my low is at 2 and my high is at 3 and then we will traverse like low is at 2 and high is at 3 so again we will swap the functions so this becomes 4 3 2 and 1 and now my after low plus plus now low is here and high is here we come out of the while loop since the condition is not satisfied okay so this my function ends right here and i get the reversal of my array is this clear now yes it is thank you okay okay guys so what we can do right now is uh, we have one question left and we have around 15 minutes till 1 o'clock so we have two options either we can uh, do the whole question like we have done in all of the other questions and that might take a little bit extra time or if everyone wants then we can end the session in a while and we will send you the ppt so you can do the code on your own and if you have any doubts you can ask us so you have the option either we can explain the whole thing or we can just send you the code if you have a time constraint so please i mean 15 minutes we can wait if if the question can be solved in 15 minutes then we can wait i believe if others do not have any problem else what we can do is i the other option this side Okay, so if everyone wants to do the question properly, so please write it in the chat box. Or uh, in any case, uh, let us do the question. And if anyone wants to leave, you can leave the meeting. Uh, if you have any time constraint, but otherwise you can listen to the whole question here. So I think Bhavan, you can continue now. Okay. Uh, so the last question is: We are given a sorted array. and we have to remove the duplicate elements of the array i will give you guys 10 seconds you just read examples in the question once and uh, what we have the output is supposed to be the length of the new array so just read the question once okay so uh, we will start with the question now um so in this question we are supposed to know a few things in already uh, that the duplicate of an element will be next to that that element only okay like the duplicate of elements will be uh, will be 
adjacent to each other like for example because it is a sorted array so if we have two here and there are duplicates present so the next two would be next to this index two only okay and then the second thing that we're supposed to know is that we will need a variable to keep the track of the index where we will be placing our elements uh, and the last thing that we're supposed to know is that the first element will always be a unique element i hope this is clear Um, I will repeat again. जैसे इसके अंदर हमें सबसे पहले तो यही देखना होगा कि जो हमारा अगर टू यहाँ पर है एंड उसके डुप्लीकेट्स एग्जिस्ट करते हैं तो वो उसके नेक्स्ट वाले इंडेक्स पर ही होंगे उसके डुप्लीकेट्स ठीक है ये हमें सबसे पहली चीज हमने ऑब्जर्व करनी है यहाँ पे एंड द सेकेंड चीज दैट जो हमें ऑब्जर्व करनी है दैट इज कि हमें एक पॉइंटर uh, चाहिए uh, हमें काउंट वेरिएबल चाहिए होगा जिससे कि हम अपने वेरिएबल्स के हम ट्रैक रख सकें कि कितना साइज हमारा बढ़ रहा है अभी इसमें एंड हमारा जो थर्ड होगा दैट इज कि जो फर्स्ट एलिमेंट होगा वो हमेशा यूनिक होगा सो रादर देन चेकिंग फ्रॉम द जीरो इंडेक्स वी कैन इजीली चेक फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट इंडेक्स ओके आई होप दिस इज क्लियर जो हमारा जो हमारा सेकेंड पॉइंटर होगा जो काउंट रख रहा होगा वो हमारा सेकेंड इंडेक्स से स्टार्ट कर सकता है एंड नॉट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट इंडेक्स बिकॉज फर्स्ट इंडेक्स विल ऑलवेज बी अक नंबर आई विल जस्ट क्विकली शो यू वाइज द अप्रोच सिंस वी डोंट हैव दैट मच टाइम ओके सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन सबसे पहले इफ आर आर एस साइज इज जीरो देन वी विल रिटर्न जीरो ओके क्योंकि कुछ है नहीं उसके अंदर सो वी विल बी रिटर्निंग जीरो and then we will initialize j is equal to वन that is the element जो हमारे indexes का track रखने वाला है so as I said कि हमें zero से start करने की जरूरत नहीं है because our first element will always be unique okay तो उसके बाद फिर we traverse we have a for loop जिसमें हम एक अलग pointer से हम traverse करते हैं from zero till the second last element बिकॉज अब क्योंकि हमारा जो फाइनल हम यहाँ पे चेक कर रहे हैं वो है दैट द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट शुड इज हम ये चेक करें इफ द एलिमेंट दैट वी हैव एट इंडेक्स आई इज इक्वल टू और नॉट इक्वल टू आई प्लस वन सो इफ वी इफ वी मूव दिस आई इंडेक्स टिल लास्ट एलिमेंट तो हमारा लास्ट में जो आई प्लस वन एथ होगा वो हमें गार्बेज वैल्यू दे देगा तो उस वजह से फिर इफ यू गाइज ट्राई दिस कोड ऑन लीड कोड तो यू विल गेट अ गार्बेज वैल्यू एंड वो एरर शो करेगा ठीक है तो इसीलिए हम इसको सेकेंड लास्ट एलिमेंट तक रिवर्स करते हैं अब उसके बाद um, अगर हम यहाँ पे लाइक द सेकेंड ऑप्शन कैन भी अगर हम i माइनस वन एंड आई को चेक कर रहे होते तो फिर हम यहाँ पे लास्ट एलिमेंट तक जाते क्योंकि हम एक प्रीवियस एलिमेंट एंड दिस नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट को चेक कर रहे हैं बट इन दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट आई हैव डन इज आई एम चेकिंग द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट विद द एडजस्टेंट एलिमेंट ओके सो Now in this question, what we are doing is first of all, if the size is zero, we are returning zero. Then we have another pointer which is at j is equal to one, and then if our then we have a for loop which starts from zero till second last element, and in this for loop, if the number at i is not equal to the number to the next number, then we will uh, then uh, we will Add the uh, add the i plus one th element to the j, okay, and then j plus plus for the count of the index. Okay, I will show you guys this here once so that it's more clear. Um. Okay. So what was the example here? हाय भावनी थिंक आपने जैसे किया तो ठीक है अगर मैं एरे को वेक्टर अज्यूम कर रही हूँ एंड मैं उस पर काउंटर इंक्रीज करने के बाद में ये फंक्शन लगाऊ एरे डॉट इरेज 
द पर्टिकुलर एलिमेंट विच इज अट और फिर उसके बाद में उसे न्यू आर बना करके दिखाऊं रिटर्न करूं तो इज दैट फाइन न्यू आर ए में ना लाइक यू कैन मेक अ न्यू आर ए बट उसमें फिर वो ना एक्स्ट्रा स्पेस नो नो द सेम आर ए आई एम आई विल कीप रिमूविंग द डुप्लीकेट्स यूजिंग द डॉट इरेज फंक्शन ऑफ वेक्टर हां यू यू कैन डू दैट अगर आपको इरेज करना है तो एवरी एलिमेंट यू विल हैव टू ट्रैवर्स एंड देन यू विल हैव टू इरेज ईच एंड एवरी एलिमेंट एंड फिर अगर लाइक वंस यू द एलिमेंट जहां पे वो सेम है जहां पे लाइक नंबर्स आर द नंबर्स आर नॉट इक्वल तो वहां पे आपका इरेज फंक्शन शुड स्टॉप तो या यू कैन डू दैट आई हैव आल्सो नॉट ट्राइड दैट अप्रोच सो यू कैन ट्राई इट बट आई थिंक दैट इट वुड वर्क ओके सो इसके अंदर इसमें सबसे पहले हमारा जो आई है वो यहाँ पर है दिस इज आर आई एफ इंडेक्स एंड नाउ वी आर ट्रवर्सिंग द होल आर ए वंस टिल वी वी रीच द सेकेंड लास्ट एलिमेंट ओके सो अब इसके अंदर हम लोग सबसे पहले जो चेक करेंगे इफ आई इज नॉट इक्वल टू आई प्लस वन Here we can see that i is not equal to i plus one. तो हमारा जो j initially था, j is equal to one पर था वो. तो हमारा element यहाँ पे same यहाँ j पे यही यही रहेगा, ठीक है? j is equal to one becomes i जो j i plus one पे था. तो ये element j is equal to one पे same रहेगा. Now our i, now we we are out of the for loop, the first for loop, and then our i is at this pointer. Now we can see that i here is equal to i plus one, so we are out of the for loop. So next, our i moves on to this pointer, and now here we can see that i is not equal to i plus one. So हमारे यहाँ पे जो j है, j becomes हमने j plus plus किया था हमारे उसमें After every for loop j plus plus होगा, but हमारे जो second approach, जो हमारा second step चल रहा था, उसके अंदर since i is equal to i plus one, तो इसलिए हमारा j भी plus plus नहीं हुआ, because it it is inside the for loop कि हम j plus plus करेंगे, तो हमारा j अभी भी अब equal to, wait मैं एक बार ना फिर से बताती हूँ, initially j is equal to one and i is equal to zero. तो इसमें हमारा सबसे पहले i इज इक्वल टू जीरो था एंड j इज इक्वल टू वन था हमने चेक किया इफ द एलिमेंट एट i इज इक्वल टू एलिमेंट इज नॉट इक्वल टू एलिमेंट एट i प्लस वन इट इज नॉट इक्वल तो हमारा जो एलिमेंट एट j बिकम्स एलिमेंट एट i प्लस वन जो कि ऑलरेडी यहाँ पे है j के i पर j पर जो एलिमेंट है नम्स j पर जो एलिमेंट है वो ऑलरेडी i प्लस वन वाला एलिमेंट ही है सो आर j नाउ बिकम्स J plus plus करके J becomes two and then we are out of the for loop. Now again we traverse the for loop. तो इसके अंदर हमारा अब जो I है वो हमारा next I जो हमारा होगा वो I plus plus होके यहाँ पे आ जाएगा and उसके बाद अब हम check करेंगे if element at I is equal to element at I plus one. उसके बाद हमारा अब I plus one पे we have three. And our j is equal to two right now, so it is not equal. So our j, our nums n j per jo element hoga, wo hamara ban jayega jo element hai nums i plus one pe. ओके तो अब ये जो थ्री एलिमेंट थर्ड वाला एलिमेंट है वो जे जो वो नाम टू पे चला जाएगा सो आर दिस बिकम्स थ्री एंड नाउ अगेन वी चेक अब हमारा जो आई फिर से आगे आएगा हियर सो अगेन वी चेक इफ आर आई इज ग्रेटर देन और इज इक्वल टू और नॉट इक्वल टू आर नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट So here again, it is not equal to the next element. So our now J, which was after the uh, the for loop, the previous for loop, it becomes three. So our four is, it will come here three. 
एंड देन वी चेक फॉर द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट दे आर इक्वल तो जे नहीं आगे बढ़ेगा बट आई इंक्रीजेस एंड देन इन द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट अगेन इट इज इक्वल तो हमारे फिर से जे नहीं बढ़ेगा बट फॉर द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इट इज नॉट इक्वल तो हमारा जो जे पर जो अब नया एलिमेंट जाएगा दैट वुड बी फाइव फाइव कम्स ओवर हियर एंड नाउ आर जे अगेन बिकम्स फोर ओके एंड देन वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इट इज अगेन इक्वल तो हमारा जे इंक्रीज नहीं होगा एंड वॉट वी रिटर्निंग इज जे सो वंस वी रिटर्न जे तो हमारा ये जो पूरा आर है यहाँ से लेकर के यहाँ तक दिस इज वॉट गेट्स रिटर्न बिकॉज हम इंडेक्स रिटर्न कर रहे हैं तो अब इसमें हमारे पास जो फिर नंबर आ जाएगा दैट वुड बी फोर एंड इसके अंदर ऑलरेडी वी कैन सी दैट हाउ मेनी यूनिक एलिमेंट्स आर देयर वन टू जे नाउ बिकम्स फाइव आफ्टर द लास्ट आइट्रेशन जे बिकम्स फाइव एंड देन वॉट वी आर रिटर्निंग इज जे सो वॉट वी आर वॉट वी हैव एज द आउटपुट इज जे इज इक्वल टू फाइव and we can also see that the number of unique elements that we have here are 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay i will show you guys the code once and explain here iske andar sabse pehle hamara the zero hai so we will return zero then our j points at 1 kyunki first element will always be unique uske baad hum apne i se traverse karte hain from zero till the second last element of our vector and then we check if nums i is not equal to nums i plus 1 if the elements the adjacent elements are unique then hum nums j par we append nums i plus 1 and hamara jo j hai we increase it by 1 again now if it is equal to hum ye wali puri for loop ko hum we are out of this for loop and then i plus we are out of this if loop and then hum i plus plus kar dete hain तो फिर हमारे नेक्स्ट भी अगेन चेक एंड अगर uh, अगर ये नॉट इक्वल होते हैं तो हमारे इंक्रीज वाला जो जे था जैसे जे इनिशियली वन था देन जे टू बना तो उसके अंदर हमारा आई प्लस वन एथ एलिमेंट को हम अपेंड कर देते हैं एंड फाइनली वी रिटर्न द इंडेक्स जे विच विल गिव अस द जे विल गिव अस द साइज ऑफ द एर बिकॉज हमारा जे स्टार्ट वन से हो रहा है तो इसमें इंडेक्स जीरो का स्टार्ट होने का भी कुछ इफेक्ट नहीं होगा बिकॉज इन द लास्ट आइट्रेशन ऑल्सो वेन वी आर ट्रेवर्सिंग द लास्ट यूनिक एलिमेंट तब भी हमारा जे इज इंक्रीजिंग बाई वन सो वी गेट रिटर्न बाई जे विच विल बी द आंसर इफ यू वाइज हैव एनी डाउट्स यू कैन आस्क मी बिकॉज दैट इज ऑल फ्रॉम माई साइड बट आई कैन एक्सप्लेन इट अगेन इफ यू वॉन्ट Do you guys have any doubts, or should I explain it again? Okay, so I don't think anyone has any doubts. Uh, this was a great session. I'm really happy that you guys listened till the end. And, uh, thank you so much for joining. I'll be uploading the recording and the PPT by evening. and i will give out the daily questions from today so please do those questions and <coughs> thank you so much for joining uh, do we get homework yes, questions today yes, yes i will uh, post the questions in a while and i'll post the whole week's questions and then you will uh, you can start solving them now so thank you all for joining us i will uh, please also give the java code for the same questions Okay, I will uh, ask the Java people in our team, and I'll ask them to write the code. Uh, thank you for this great feedback. If you guys have any can... doubts, you can message any project coordinator or the member. Yeah, you can text any of the project coordinators if you have any doubts, and we are always there to help you. So thank you so much. I'll end the meeting now.